Okay, we're in the shop again today, and I get asked the question a lot about the difference between um, solar controllers. And what I've done here today on the bench is I've simply set up a, a shunting controller. This is made by Flex Charge, and a small MPPT controller, multi-point power tracking. And the difference between the two is that the, the shunting controller basically connects directly to the batteries at any voltage below uh, its set point, which is 14.2. And once it reaches 14.2 volts, it begins turning on and off. So it'll hit 14.2, turn off, allow the battery voltage to drop back down um, to 13.2 volts roughly, and then it kicks back on again and brings the batteries back up to 14.4 or 2 volts. And then it shuts off again. So it can take a very, very, very long time to get the batteries 100% full with a controller like this. With the little Jenison MPPT controller, uh, this has three stages, so it does uh, bulk absorption and a float stage. But the benefit here is that most solar panels are rated at about 17 to 17 and a half volts. So this controller takes excess voltage that the solar panel has and turns it into current which is very useful, uh, and it can be, especially when you're limited in size in the panel that you can put in your boat. So what I've done today, I've taken the, uh, the power supply here and I'm simulating a solar panel. I've set it at 4 amps of current and 17.4 volts to simulate a typical solar panel. Uh, this panel would be somewhere between probably 60 and 80 watts at, at that amperage. Um, and what I'm going to do first is I am going to uh, connect the power supply directly to the battery bank using this switch and uh, as we can see the charge light came on on the uh, on the flex charge and up here what I've done is I've got my fluke uh, 179 inserted in between the circuit and we can see the amperage uh, that, that's being delivered to the bank now the power supply is saying 4 amps you know this this is uh, the fluke is, is probably quite a bit more accurate than that so we're probably getting about 4.1 amps out of it what I'm going to do now is I'm going to disconnect the uh, the flex charge controller which I just did uh, with this this is what was connecting and I'm going I'm to connect it now to the Jenison controller and uh, I'm going to flip this on and we can see what happens we, we've, we've now come up to our four amps but the solar panel uh, or the power supply has been allowed to come up to its 17.4 volts however when we look up here take a look at the fluke meter and see what it's saying this is a, a full amp more than what we're seeing at, at the same solar with the same solar panel all the parameters are the same but we're getting about a full amp more than we had with the uh, flex charge controller. So this is shows exactly how the MPPT controller works. Uh, we can see that the solar panel is allowed to come up to its 17.4 volts rather than being directly connected to the battery which sucks the panel voltage down which is what happens with a shunting type controller. Um, the controller passes through the MPPT circuitry allowing the panel voltage to, to remain high uh, the, the panel output is still you know, 3.9 to 4.1 amps. The power supply is, is trying to control that right now. But when we look up here, we can see the benefit of the MPPT. And in this case, we've got a significant uh, amount of current difference between the flex charge and the, and the Jenison. A full amp at 4 amps of output, which is pretty impressive. So, you know, if you've got a small boat uh, and you're limited in how big of an array you can put on the boat in, in terms of square footage or square inches uh, an MPPT controller uh, while a little bit more money than this type of controller uh, can certainly be beneficial and in, in this situation uh, you, you know you're getting a full amp more output at just four amps so um, pretty pretty impressive stuff and it shows exactly how an MPPT controller works compared to uh, a shunting controller and with this little experiment you can see it firsthand and you can see the differences in output now this battery is still these this, these batteries are in bulk mode I've drawn them down so that uh, you know that the voltage on the batteries is certainly not hitting um, anywhere near uh, where this would 
where this controller would go into absorption mode. As, as we can see from the blinking light, we are still in bulk mode. And uh, after bulk, it would, it would get up to 14.4 volts, hold it there for a period of time, and then it would go into float mode and, and drop the voltage back down. Uh, where the shunting controller, it would again bring it up to 14.2 volts, shut off, and wait for the battery voltage to fall back to 13.4 volts, roughly, and then it would kick back on. And that time that it takes for these batteries to drop that surface charge can be pretty significant. So you can waste a good portion of your day trying to, to, to top these batteries off, get them back to 100%, uh, in that on-off cycling uh, on that type of controller. So again, let me let me just do this one more time for you, so you can see. I'm going to turn off the battery switch. I am going to switch over to the flex charge. Flip that over to bank two. And again, no parameters have changed. We can see that the uh, the voltage here has been sucked down to 14.2 volts instead of being allowed to maintain that high voltage of 17.4. As you can see, the current out of the power supply is still the same and it's still the same here. We get no benefit, no extra current uh, going to the batteries with this type of controller, so uh, the, the, the MPPT controller can certainly be useful. They are more money, so oftentimes if you have the real estate it's cheaper to put the money into an array than it is an MPPT. However, if, you're, if you don't have any more real estate on the boat for solar panels, uh, an MPPT controller can certainly give you some more boost and some more efficiency in your solar charging. Hope that helps.